In our previous section, we learned how to add a feature to your input screen where you can drag and drop the file to um, the control. And now I'm going to walk you through how I created this custom table. We'll see what are the components, what are the elements within this particular table, how I came up with this um, read and write to, to the table. Okay, I'm going to go to the design mode of this form again. So here, this is a simple custom table that I've created. Um, again, we already know how to create this top portion. And these are basically the labels indicating the header of the table. And once I click here, you'll observe that the name of the control is T1 underscore R1 underscore C1, basically representing the table name, the row number, and the column number. Okay. So if I select the second one, it's going to be row 2, column 2, column 1. So if I go down here, it's going to be row 3, column 2. If I go down here, it's going to be row number 4, column, uh, column number 3, and so on. You could ask me, it will be too much to add this manually, all these controls. So that's why I've written a small code to add this in the design mode on runtime so that you don't have to create all this and rename all these controls in a way you want this. Okay, and along with this table, you'll see there's a flat scroll bar. Again, you can find this by going to your additional controls. If you don't find it, again, I'm going to do a small video uh, where we can add all the street view, list view, all the common controls um, that you don't find normally. I didn't find it because I was using, I'm also using Office 365. So I'll show you how I added this um, by installing some uh, DLL files to my computer. Okay, so we'll talk about this as well. Now, uh, let's talk about how I designed this using um, using the, you know, like the code to run on runtime in design mode. Uh, just before that, if you don't want to use this custom table or create this and go through this, there's an option you can use a list, uh, list view. We have already talked about the list viewer. We can drag the file on top of it. But this one is actually for, um, I'll show you very quickly. So if you load up this um, form, this is how, you know, like this is a sample of how the list view table will look like. Okay. So some good things about this particular object or control is that you can add colors to the labels like this, you know, like alternate one are in blue for an example. Some of them are in red. Let's say you want to highlight uh, the negative values in red, then this can become useful. There's a hover effect once you, you know, like place your cursor on top of this. So I'll do a small video again on, you know, like how to use this table. I don't want to prolong this uh, video for too long, but this is an option that you have. Okay. I'm going to close this one out for now. Now going to how to how I design this table in the runtime. So this code is pretty rough, uh, but uh, if you want to have it as a reference, I'm happy to share it. Just let me know. Okay, so this is the blank user form, and this is the code that I can run to add uh, all these, you know, like uh, controls in a in a way I want. So basically, here let's say that I want to add seven rows uh, in a table. And let's say I want to have five columns and I'm going to run this just to demonstrate this. So it adds all this to, to user form one, basically to this one. So if you go here, you see now that it has added. So this is the code I'm using. And once you click on these controls, again, you'll see here that the name has been automatically added. This can be, you know, like control from the code. And if I select here, it's row number two, column two. Uh, row number three, column number three, and so on. Okay, so once you have this in the way you want, for example, um, if I have to show how I actually did, what is there? Row number twelve, I added, and then four columns. So if I run this and go back to the code, you see in this fashion. So first one, I use it for date uh, in which so is smaller like this. These two are um, you know bigger. And width like this and the amount again is smaller like this so once I design in this fashion here you could design the entire thing from here itself you can add um, like a, a line 
something like this the width uh the height for this i think i put uh 0 0.5 so it looks very thin so i manually added these lines in between all these tables like this again i don't take care of all the colors uh on runtime uh, i mean manually i try to take care of that when the code is running so basically this is how i added all these lines between this to make it look like uh, a table okay so similarly you can also make um you can add a horizontal you can add it to vertical So the width again could be really small so that it looks very thin, something like this. Something like this, okay. So once I added all this, I cut and paste this to our form back here. So now you got the idea how this can be created. So you, if you want more columns, and then you can easily replicate this. Again, the background is same as all this. I've added this. Total is uh, again the label and the name. The name of the label is uh, 141. I didn't rename this because this is just a fixed static uh, text that is going to sit on top of this. And then here, this is the total TV total. So on run runtime, it's going to add up all the values and then assign a value here. Okay. So that is how I created. The, the table now i'm going to quickly show you as well the code that is writing to this particular um table so behind uh let me close this behind the scene so there is a staging table this is where from where it's going to load up uh, automatically when the form is loaded the table is supposed to be blank but i disabled that so that we can demonstrate this so for example if you load this any form to um from the micros you'll see this will load up this one load up in full full screen so that way we can see at the back as well so here you can see like uh, all these values starting from uh, i till l has been loaded here okay so let's have a quick look at the code going to initialize codes and here load table okay so load table function and then we're passing that the parameter to okay i'll explain what is that so if you go to this particular code now, again, these are all declaration. I is going to be long, J, T is going to be the text, C and R is going to be, uh, again, all these are going to be numbers. These are going to be numbers. Um, this will hold uh, our total amount for all the expenses. This is going to take care of the last row with the data and dynamically is going to identify what is the last row. When there's a new data set down here, it's going to identify 11 should be a new, uh, you know, last row with the data. It automatically assigns it. Staging is the worksheet. And then that is, um, you know, like a variable. So here it finds the last row uh, with the data. And then this is about the flat scroll bar. So if you go here, you see the scroll bar. Automatically, when you run this, you'll not see uh, a scroll bar scroll bar gets enabled when the item is more than 12 in the table okay okay so here so very quickly here this portion is basically assigning minimum and maximum uh, so basically if you assign uh, if you don't assign a maximum and minimum what is going to happen is your scroll bar the space to scroll through will be, there will be a lot okay so based on the data uh, the scroll bar size is going to increase and decrease okay so here i'm saying if the last row is greater than 13 then it's going to do um, the last row whatever is the last row minus 11 so the table is going to always show 12 records only and here we're saying if the data is more than 13 rows and then we are making the scroll bar visible otherwise we're turning the visibility to false and this t is basically holding the name of the table again the custom table row number uh here is uh in the beginning is uh, set to zero and here if the start row you know like when the function is called and the start row which is passed here is lesser than two 
that means um, we are automatically setting it to two okay because we want the data to always start from two like this again here j symbolizes the column so 9 column 9 to 12 is going to loop through from 9 to 12 so here you can see the column is 9 and then it loops from column i to l so 9 to 12 is i to l okay yeah and c is basically the column for our custom table so every time this runs it's going to add one column each so one two three four one when it reaches four it's going to go back to you know like uh, it'll go back to one after that so here this function basically is taking the name of the field and then second part is taking the value that you want to add it to that particular table so if you look at this particular string basically t is t1 or table right underscore r and then whatever is the row at that particular runtime and then underscore c that is again uh, the column that we are dynamically setting so this is dynamically constructed to refer to these cells within the custom table okay and here basically this portion is adding passing the value that we want to add to the custom table cells okay if you look here uh, we're saying if the column is uh, the, the index of the column at that point of time for custom table is 4 basically I'm formatting it with um, to look at like a currency yeah so that it looks like this okay so if there is more values it will put a comma and so on that is for that purpose this is formatting it otherwise we're loading the rest of the data as it is for other columns from here to here we're loading as it is okay so if you don't format your data correctly at the source is gonna uh, load let's see that if your date is set to general format is gonna load up in this fashion okay so you take care of that and the amount is basically the sum function you uh, this is the way you can write your sum uh, using the worksheet function and the sum and this is the range is summing so from L2 till L and last row so from L2 till whatever is the last row of data now it's row number 10 it's going to sum like this and then at that particular value again this function basically ba basically takes the name of the field and then the value you want to add it so if you go there now quickly again this is a small one this is how you can um, refer to control so very quickly let's see that um, when you earlier in that vi uh, first video we learned that when the form is getting loaded we assign a dynamically uh, dynamically we assign a value right for example so pre-fill like this so either you can refer to um, a control in this fashion or you can say me dot controls and then within this control you can assign the name of the control and then we can say value is equal to something like this so that code is basically constructing this portion of the string which is representing the name of the control and then when the code is running it dynamically constructs what should be the cell what should be the table uh, the column and so on and then it's the adding them to these particular cells okay so i think that's all for this particular section in our last section we're going to discuss and i'll show you what happens at the back end when you click on add expense or when you click on submit report uh, where does all this data get stored and what happens to the document that we attach to this particular expense